Welcome back to another SDS2.NET API tutorial. Personally, I love to create things. I believe most of us do. But I also think it's time that we start to create things with our API. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at adding beams and columns to our models. Not only that, we're also going to learn how we can connect things together. Without further delay, let's slide on into this. I have a project set up here in Visual Studio where I've already implemented the connection to SDS2, opened up my job, and I've started a transaction. If you're new to our API, I suggest that you go and watch the other videos in our .NET API playlist. SDS2 has implemented several types of members in their API. We have horizontal, brace, vertical brace, beam, column, and several others. In today's video, we're going to mostly be focusing on just beams and columns. The first thing that we need to do to create a member is get an instance the material file. So we'll say material file, bring in it's using from SDS2 setup. And then we'll say material file dot get. Perfect. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and start creating our very first column. So we are going to want to use the base class of column that comes from the designdata.sds2.model library. We'll call this column one, because in this example, we're going to have more than one. So that equals new column. Now you could just call the constructor, but there is a very important field called shape that you'll make sure you want to fill in. If you don't, this will cause a lot of issues inside your model. So we'll say shape. And this is where we use our material file. And we want to use the find method. Now this takes in a string of the section size that you want. Now I'm using W24 by 76. But if I would have accidentally said W24 by 760, that clearly doesn't exist. And we'll get an invalid value exception. So I'll go ahead and delete that zero. And we'll be back in business. Now, the next thing that we need to do is set the ends of our column. So if we say call one dot ends, and we take a look here, Visual Studio is hinting that it only has a getter. Well, this is because the ends already exist. So we need to index into the ends. The ends is a index of two that represents the left and right ends of our member. So the zeroth index is the left end. And so we're going to set this to a new point 3D. Sorry. <laughs> we'll want to set the location of the left end equal to a new point 3D. And we're going to put this one at 0, 0, 0 of our model. And then we'll want to index into the first indice of the ends. So that way we can access our right side of the member. And we're going to put this one at 10 feet tall. Now, the unit system of my model is in inches. So I'm going to put this at 0, 0, 120. Okay, now the next thing that we need to do is to add this column to our transaction. And as far as the column goes, we're all set up. Now, there's one extra th thing that we need to do that's been different than all of our other transactions previous is that we need to make sure that we want to process our members. So we'll just pass in true into our commit down here where it sees process members. And now we are good to run it. So we'll say start. And of course I have build errors. Um, ah, all right. So go ahead, we'll, we'll just say job is equal to database.job because there is uh, two different job classes and now we'll say start all right so it says the transaction was committed we go over to sds2 we see that they do have a column stick and we open that up it is our w24 by 76. now i want to add the other column in beam so i can create a frame this is done exactly like the previous column, except for the beam, we'll use the beam class, of course, instead of the column. Then all we have to do is set the frames, and don't forget to set those shapes. 
Okay, now that we have our two columns and a beam inside of our model, we want to go ahead and add some connections to these. So let's go ahead and delete these out of our model. So in order to add connections, we first have to get the component list from our beam. So we're going to say component list. And we'll call this CL is equal to beam.getComponents. Now this component list, just like our ends, is an array and it has indexes, the zeroth index being the left and the first index being the right side. So we'll want to cast each of these components to a connection component. So we'll say CL sub zero. Then we want to set the input specification and we want to set this equal to new shear tab. Perfect. And then we want to do the same thing for the right side. So we'll say connection component, CL. We'll do this for the first index, input specification equals new auto standard specification. Perfect. So now what we should expect to see this time when we run is we should see three members, the beam being connected by a shear tab on the left hand side and an auto standard on the right hand side. So let's go ahead. Let's run it. Transaction was committed. Go back to SDS2. Toggle our visibility. Let's take a look at our connections here. So that's a shear tab and that looks good on the right end. And then if we open this up, we can see that we have our shear and our auto standard connections. Thank you for tuning in with us again today. It was a lot of fun learning how we can add members to our SDS2 model. Don't forget to like, comment, and smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our next video. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.